to go beyond the doors of schools, colleges, and universities called Light of Perception. Well, now, where do you get that title from? If you're a student, you know how Imam dealt with perception. We have to change the way people are looking at things, right? Didn't Allah in Hadith Qudsi, right, which is a, a, the Prophet would say, this is from Allah, right? He said that, the, that Allah has showed Angel Jibreel a glimpse of the creation. And Jibreel, he said, Ya Allah! Oh Allah, I don't see how anything can deviate in such an immaculate, beautiful creation. And then, at an eye's blink, he showed Jibreel the creation after Shaitan had did what? Put his gurura on it, his design on it. And Jibreel, the angel Jibreel, he said, Ya Allah, I don't see how anything can go straight in such a tricky, deceptive creation. Perception. Perception. The Prophet ﷺ was dealing with perception then. But here's the, here's the thing that I want to show you. I just want to, and I pray that Allah bless me to do this. I'm a student of the Quran first. First and foremost. Second, I, am, I have become an avid I have become an avid supporter of historical references or books about Muhammad the Prophet, even the ones that are totally wrong. You remember what I said, you gotta read them all. Because you have to see the perception and the perspective across the board in order to deal with people, especially when they try to bring one thing against our dear prophet and say that he's a pedophile, or they try to bring one thing and say he was a warlord. You have to understand the mind that has produced these books. It will help. So when Imam Wazir started teaching an intense tafsir of Muhammad the prophet about seven years ago, I became one of the biggest students in that class. And when he taught it, he taught us with the language and tafsir of Imam W. Muhammad. This thing took off around Houston so fast, you had people that were, I mean, this class was like 85, 90% immigrant Muslims. Started in a restaurant because the perception that Imam Wazir was giving us of the Muhammad the Prophet, he would say, it's so real in here, you're gonna smell camel and feel the sand beneath your feet. <laughs> And it was like that because of the way he brought it out and illustrated it with the language of the Imam. You felt like he was right there in Arabia. You saw Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a real man who cried, who emotionally struggled, who dealt with things. And you didn't see him as, you know, like I used to see how they taught me to see Christ Jesus. You saw him as a real man. So in saying that, Allah has revealed in the Quran something so precious to us believers that Imam Muhammad taught in this 2005 Ramadan session. There's a verse and there's a tall chapter in the Quran, beautiful chapter in the Quran. Not very long, you should read it. It's not very long at all. It's very enlightening, called Surah Al-Shams. This is 91 of the Quran. And in Surah Al-Shams, Allah says, wa nafsin wa By the soul and the order or the balance that we have given to it. فَأَلْحَمَهَا الْفُوجُ الرَّحَى وَالتَّخْوَاهَا It is فَأَلْحَمَهَا It is enlightened. It is informed. It is taught. It is intuitively educated as to what is fujura وَالتَّخْوَاهَا Just want to talk about fujura and taqwa. I had a conversation with in my, my I call him the chief leader, Imam Qasim Ahmed. You know, this is my daily advisor. He said, you gotta stop calling me, I'm finna go on the program. He was texting me during the program. But I love him to death because he only wants to see this Quran grow in me. And I respect him so much for that. He was sharing with me some things from our beloved Imam of this Fujur. And he said, this fujur, as Imam Muhammad says, is the ego in the soul that loses its way. You know, fujur is from fajr, right? We know what fajr is, 
But fujur is before fajr. You know, fujur comes before. And fujur is that uh, also it's the capacity in us, the potential in us, like a uh, brother Ismail was saying, the potential in us to engage the material world. But it's just potential, it's just stored. Right? Now, when that p store potential, you know they say, an idle mind is a devil's workshop, right? You ain't doing nothing. Shaitan is setting you up. Okay, he, he stopped now. I'm finna set him up with something, because the minute he starts moving, and he's gonna walk into a facade, he's gonna walk into a deception. I'm finna get him. That's why, it's, that's why you have to stay moving. You know, one person asked me one time, where's Imam Muhammad's, where's his central office at? I say, don't have one. I heard him once say, I'm a moving target. They have to move around with me. And I understood why he said that. Because you don't give people time to set up on you. You're constantly moving, you're constantly working, you're constantly reinventing yourself. That's what this new, new people in, 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 in new Africa is all about, brothers and sisters. Reinventing ourselves. And young people, go to school, get as much education as you can. But filter your education through the Quran and the language of Imam W.D. Muhammad. I did it. It was one time in school when I was going in, I was having a bad semester. I was like, a, I was like registered like six C's. I said, I had a talk with him at Wazir. He said, read the Quran. Just read the Quran. Start filtering that knowledge through the Quran. Remember, the Quran produced all that science. Start filtering it through the Quran. And my grades took an about face immediately. Immediately. Dear brothers and sisters, dear young people, take this, 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 this occasion, this Savior's Day that we have. And I know my time is very limited. And I, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ability or gives us the, the energy to continue such a program with the tenacity, with the knowledge, with the conviction, with the sincerity that we have today. Because it'll be in this format, it'll be in, on, on this stage that we will begin to write the uh, appreciate the legacy that Imam W. D. Muhammad wanted for this community and we will begin to show the world that we're not dependents, we're not stepchildren, we're leaders. Allah created us to lead the world. Muhammad the Prophet didn't come to follow, he came to lead the world and we are examples of, of students of Muhammad the Prophet So in that light, let us not take Savior's Day lightly. It's a new beginning for a new people and the new people are people who think with scripture. The new people are people who take the words of scripture and build their reality. Stop waiting on somebody to give us a reality. Opportunity is open for everybody now. People complain about things that are going on in their neighborhood. People complain about things they want to change. You know, what are you doing? What can you do to implement the smallest idea to affect change in society? This is where we should be thinking. This is where our, our, our motivation should come from. So young people, this community needs you. You see all these pioneers out here? They've done their work. You know, I find it very, everywhere I go, I'm, I'm seeing Wallace as a youth too, because I'm not too far behind him. But I see everywhere I go, Leadership in our community, especially as young leaders, especially myself, I'm always accompanied by a pioneer. Everywhere I go, Imam Farouk is traveling with me today. Why is that? Because experience is the best overseer for the worker. And I have no problem with being pulled up by the collar and saying, hey, hey. <laughs> But I watched this through my mentor, Imam Wazir. He traveled with Sheikh Talib Din Ahmed. You know Sheikh Talib Din Ahmed? He was always with Imam, Imam Farouk. Always having a pioneer there to see what you can't see. And that's what makes pioneers relevant today. But us young people, we have a flag, we have a banner to uphold. And there's nothing stopping you. Imam Muhammad said, we cannot stop. So what you waiting on? May Allah bless us and guide us, and I thank you all for this opportunity. And there's some big things about to happen in this community. And if you know what we're doing in Houston, we want Houston to be to rub off. We want Houston to serve as a beacon of light for those communities outside of Houston to do the same thing, to replicate what we're doing in Houston, to be able to reach out and build relationships with people, share the Imam's language, change the whole face of Islam in America. 
because we can. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already assured us that, that it's possible. Thank you all. Assalamu alaikum. Happy Savings Day. So we want to thank you, ma'am, Tyree Alameen Boyd, for his uh, excellent uh, comments, inshallah. Inshallah, we're pushing to try to get out of here by 5 o'clock. So uh, next we have um, a presentation by Abdul Rashid Akbar. Uh, he's going to give us a 10-minute presentation. We get 10 minutes. I see the time. brothers and sisters. <clears throat> How's everyone doing? Uh, I just want to call your attention to the uh, to the screen here, and uh, I have the uh, pleasure, as I did last Savings Day, to talk about the uh, Moss Cares uh, Pledge Drive. All right, and uh, my wife is assisting me. Uh, I'll let her know when to turn the slides. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> as uh, as the president of the Moss Cares said, uh, was the Muhammad. The second is said, uh, the uh, Mosque Cares is a nonprofit Islamic charity. Now we all know what a charity is, right? Do we all know what a charity is, right? Yes. Okay, all right. <clears throat> In order for a charity to do its work, it needs support. And they always ask for the support, all right? And uh, I liken, uh, the mosque cares, the charity, to um, the Red Cross. Uh, I get I get solicitations from Sloan Catering. I mean, uh, I get solicitations in the mail <clears throat> all through the year for people who are asking for support for a particular issue, a particular program that they're uh, working on and searching for and need support for. It could be cancer research. It could be for whatever. All right, and. Uh, is uh, also, as Wazdu Muhammad II said, but we want the mosque cares to be the largest and most prosperous uh, Islamic or charity out there, working on behalf of the people, all right? And working on behalf of all people, all right? So, uh, the plans drive is what we call extra effort. It's to give that extra gift, uh, if you can, if you can find your way to do so. Uh, and we ask you to give it um, at least once a year. If you can give it more, then you'll be blessed more. All right. Uh, so, of course, the, the, as I said, the charity is organized under the IRS code 501c3. And what does that mean? That means all the gifts that you give, that you can deduct this for your taxes. They're tax deductible. All right. So when you give to the mosque cares. Yes, you're given uh, for the work of the mosque cares, but you also can deduct it. The IRS said you can deduct that money from your taxes, just like some people deduct money when they give to their religious organization. All right? So just understand the money is going to be used for a good purpose, and you can deduct it off your taxes. Um, 